It's a stumps to be close. He missed fields. That's a rare occasion for Michael Holding. He'll pick up two bonus runs. A fairly good looking on drive there, and that ball just catching mid on napping. And again, that laxness creeping into the West Indian fielding. There does seem to be a general air of relaxation out there. He was looking for the run out, Michael Holding. He had the chance, but he took his eye off the ball. That's unusual because he's a superb fieldsman. Well, that was quite unusual. Almost unique for Michael Holding. Normally the best of fieldsmen. There's going to be another change in the attack. Andy Roberts been relieved after four overs, no wicket for 11. Joel Garner coming in, well, into the breeze. Joel Garner has an excellent test record and it's a bowling average of under 20 in test cricket. He's coming into a breeze that's coming from fine week to mid off, so finding it hard to bowl the in swinger. in there, very keen to get the single. Sent back by Mansour. Garner running up the hill. Into the breeze. And expect to move the ball in the air. Coming back for the second. Hit going to be close, it's got very close, it's out. What a beautiful piece of fielding. Malcolm Marshall hitting these stumps on the fall. It was a risky second run. He just rolled slightly at the non-striker's end and the throw was right at the base of the stumps. And that was a desperate piece of luck for Mansour because the stumps were struck as Mansour was about a yard short. But you notice that Mansour had his bat in the air too. One for 20. So here comes to the crease. Watch that run out from Malcolm Marshall. Watch the batsman with his bat in the air. Coming into frame now and to give himself a chance, really, because he puts the bat in over the line on the full. He would have still been out, I think, even if he had grounded the bat. But uh, he would have only been out by a matter of six inches to a foot. There he was out by six inches and a foot in the air. So here the key batsman comes in. That was a disappointing moment for Pakistan. They played well. There was always two in that. He just dwelt when he turned and the throw from Marshall was superb. Superb in terms of direction, not in height. It was spot on. Just one stump for Marshall to aim at and he hit it. To the test match, get off his neck. One for 32, Pakistan. It's the eleventh over. Bold, well bold. He cut one back earlier this over very, very sharply. I suppose you could say that's bad luck as far as uh, Motion Khan's concerned, because he did play on. But uh, Marshall, twice this over, has had him playing very late. Well, as so often happens to Motion Khan, he looks good and then gets out. And that a beautiful ball from Malcolm Marshall. Used to rip her down in Melbourne to get rid of Ellen Border on Sunday and doing just that again to get rid of Moses. Javed Meandad, his strike rate, brought to the wicket by the dismissal of Mosin Khan. The ball that pitched just outside off stump, came back, found the gap in between bat and pad. So the second wicket down, Pakistan, and Malcolm Marshall doing the damage on this occasion, just dr dragging it back. Joel Garner, it is now from the southern or Randwick end to Zahir, as he so often does, gives himself a bit of room outside the off stump, but he's been very consistent. Might not uh, get himself right behind the ball against these West Indian bowlers, but he's made runs against them every time. That's all you have to do. You 
wouldn't believe it if someone described it to you miles away from the ground but sitting here it is incomprehensible the runouts we've seen this summer not only coming in limited over cricket but Zahi on the defensive a beautiful cut off by Viv Richards Javid called no response from Zahir and all the man at mid-wicket had to do was just throw it to Joel Garner who takes off the bales Zahir left his ground and he was run out by half the pitch so Zahir he's run out for one Rajim Raja is the new batsman. Javid me and Dad because they crossed for that run is taking strike now against Ghana. No. That was a disastrous run out that uh, saw the loss of Zahir's wicket. Good piece of fielding by Richards. It was. He got across extremely quickly. You look at Zahir, his eye on the ball, never looked at Javid for one moment. And then he had to go. He saw that he was out of his crease. And the second run out, and Joel Garner with no real problems at taking those bales off. Richards cuts it off. Desmond Haynes backs up, as was good cricket, and straight to Joel Garner. This day's match here at the SCG is between Australia and Pakistan. Australians have to win all their games from now on. Obviously that banner referring to last weekend's performances down in Melbourne. Australians didn't perform all that well at all. Losing to Pakistan and West Indies on Sunday. Four runs could be. Yes, just getting... Starts his seventh over. Crowd, which, uh, as would be expected, not as uh, as big as it would be for a, an Australian game, especially on a Tuesday. But nevertheless, uh, I think it's not a bad one. Australia playing Pakistan on Thursday and the pressure right on Australia now they have to win that game on Thursday they have to win all their other games and the pressure right on them not impossible that they can still get through to those finals but really plenty of pressure on them and that's gone caught behind Beautiful delivery from the Big Bird. Javid out. Court Dujan. Bull Garner. 26. 4 for 75. There's really not a lot Javid could do about that delivery. Had to play it. And it was a beautiful leg cutter. Just going far enough. Jeffrey Dujan going up there with the bounce. And umpire Mel Johnson really didn't even need to signify that. Javid was on his way. And Pakistan are 4 for 75.
There's uh, a youngster we have not seen on Channel 9's Wide World of Sports for the season. The youngest man in international cricket at the present time, Salim Malik, considered one of the outstanding young cricketers, a star of the future. Born on April the 16th, 1963. And he's replacing his captain at the wicket. Caught behind off a beautiful leg cutter. Salim Malik will be captain of the Pakistan under-19 team, which will tour Australia towards the end of this month. He will leave the senior team to take up that assignment. But very, very highly considered in Pakistan. I wonder if they'll let him go if he gets uh, a quick hundred in this game, Tony. Well, he didn't get quite a hundred here. Ball, second ball, off the inside edge. And real disappointment for the young man. I said, it is a pity. I was really looking forward to having a look at the youngster. But an inside edge onto the stumps. And, uh, he's ended his first innings in Australia. Accompanied by... Battles the duck back to the pavilion. So Salim Malik out for a duck. And Pakistan have lost their fifth wicket for 75. Khan really hasn't done much with the bat this season. A lot now expected of him. Comes in with Pakistan 5 for 75. And uh, nothing much remaining. There's just Ijaz to come after him. Tahir, Sikanda, and Wazimbari. Here's the man who has uh, just transformed the Pakistan innings with two wickets in this over. First of all, Javed and then Salim Malik. And the end of a fine over from Ghana. Five for 75. Ghana's seventh over. Two wickets coming in it. Pakistan really up against it here. Well, this was the second of Joel Ghana's wickets in that over an inside edge from young Salim back onto the stumps perhaps a little unfortunate in his uh, first international outing just knocking it down onto the stumps and uh, those two wickets in that over will remarkably improve Big Bird's strike rate the ball just seemed to stay down a fraction on Salim Difficult there for Jeffrey Dujon. He, he cannot raise the right arm. It's uh, the right shoulder which is injured. And you'll see him anything over his head raising the, the left arm. The right arm is virtually immobile. But with the number one keeper David Murray having a broken finger, the West Indies have been forced to use Dujon to keep wicket. Torn muscles in the right shoulder. That prevented him from uh, 
fielding on the last day of the test match here. And that ball just past the left hand of Gordon Greenwich, a fully fit fielder. Might just have got across in time, but Gordon Greenwich is another one of the West Indians carrying an injury. Just a little limp. His right knee injured while fielding in early December in a match against Queensland. Forced him out of the first test and he came into the second test badly limping. But it's improving all the time, but still not quite 100% fit yet. Certainly went right through him and right through Dujon as well. A little bit of turn there for Viv Richards. As he ran his fingers across that one. And just beat the outside edge and the off stump. Very good delivery there from Viv Richards. The end of his over, it's five for 78. for 90. Imran 6, Raj at 20. Ijaz, Bari, Tahir and Sikander to come. So apart from Ijaz who can bat a bit and Wazi Bari, well he's not too bad. They haven't got a very long tail actually. Pakistan. 5 for 90 in 30 overs is not enough on this ground. It's small when the ropes are in. Roberts. And fielded by Greenidge at cover. The Pakistan middle order, Tony, have uh, had it pretty easy this year with me and Dad and Zahir in good form. And it's up to them now, particularly Raju and Imran, to, to do something with the bat. A 50 each here and they're working at 200. I think it's such a good batting wicket that they can do it if they play their shots. Clive Lloyd feels that one, yes. Uh, terrible blow today to Pakistan to have... Zahir run out and it's rather ironical in fact because he and me and dad ran so magnificently down in Melbourne against the Australians and they came out here today and obviously that confidence was there and it left them for just a second and ended up with Zahir being stranded in the middle of the pitch. Very well run out. It's beautifully timed again by Wazim Raja but field well placed by Clive Lloyd. There's a sweeper down there. Three quarters of the way to the point boundary, Richards. Interesting, Clive Lloyd, Tony. He's relieved Garner. Eight overs, two for 12, and up the for Andy Roberts. Clive done this quite often during the summer, had a side down and then rested his main strikers for the final overs. So he's probably giving Imran and Raja a chance to consolidate like that against Roberts and Richards, who haven't got the. Uh, striking rate of Garner at the stage. That's certainly right, and uh, he's playing the penalty here. Have a look at this shot. Magnificent shot that by Imran. He's very strong, and when he really lets them go, he hits them very hard, and there was no way in the world that anyone is going to cut that off or just hit through the gap. And even though Clive Lloyd has got a man on the point boundary on that side, Larry Gomes fielding right down there on the boundary, there was no chance of him making the ground... Five for 97. Andy Roberts. He has no wicket for 16. Not really presenting many problems out there for the Pakistanis at the moment. Roberts's days of presenting all the problems in the world for batsmen wherever he went seemed to be fast disappearing. Opened the bowling with Michael Holding, he did. Five overs, no wicket for 16. It's not been that expensive. Last over, of course, he went for five or six. Well fielded by Clive Lloyd. The West Indians have lifted themselves in the field. They're a little bit lethargic early, but since the 
Breakthrough by Joel Garner in particular. They're really keen. Joel Garner is always active in any position. He's at mid off and Rogie's at cover. He's magnificent. Void at backward point. Greenwich are all very keen. Coming in quickly now for the bowling of Richards. Pitch out there is uh, pretty quick. It's got a tinge of green in it. You can see quite a lot of longish green grass through the middle of that wicket. It's not totally white. But, uh, it is dry and pretty hard, so the ball that's bowled very quickly and banged in short does bounce. Tremendous pitch out here, the Sydney Green Ground wicket. The ball comes onto the bat quickly enough to allow the batsman to hit through it with all the confidence in the world. One of the problems, of course, down in Melbourne has been the slowness of the pitch down there and one has to be very careful when driving because the chances are, if you haven't been out there for a while, that you'll hit it in the air. That's one very different ball coming onto the bat beautifully here. If you get your eye in at the Sydney Great Ground, you really can make the pitch work for you. That one wide down the leg side and signalled wide too. That's good umpiring. Umpire Mel Johnson's been right on the ball this afternoon, hasn't missed one. Andy Roberts, two or three years ago, would have got away with that dog of which he pushes across the right-hander. Can't play a shot from your normal batting position, and that's good umpiring, very consistent umpiring. Oh, he's dropped him. Well, that one was hit very hard, and Logie there diving away to his left. Made a good, pretty good effort at that one, but it went straight through his hand. It was hit with a lot of force. Logie's caught everything the sum of that one was just to his left, and his natural hand, and knocked it down. Very difficult chance. It was hit with tremendous power by Imran. He really gave it the works, and he dived across to his left and couldn't hang on to a very hot chance, that one. Five for 99. So, uh, Aver and Imran Khan is going to be facing. It'll be interesting to see whether he tries to make the most of it in terms of a few big hits. And Lloyd has slightly altered the field. Had a deep square leg. Garner has come a bit squarer. So it's not quite as enticing now to that sweep shot going. Once again, firmly hit back down the pitch. <laughs> Once again, Vivian Richards half-stopping the ball. Pakistan tactics will probably be to pick up four or five runs and over without taking too many risks at this stage. It's only the 36th over, five for 104. Five top order batsmen back in the dressing room. Pick up six and over, they're going to make close to 200, which is not a bad score. Joel Garner, the fieldsman. They must bat out their 50 overs. That's where the Australians let themselves down at the weekend. Bat out the 50 overs and every run is valuable. You don't know. You come out to bowl and pick up two or three quick wickets with the new ball. 200's a big score then. So responsibility for Raj and Imran. Yes, it certainly is a very important criteria in the one-day game. If ever you get yourself into a position whereby it looks as if you're going to run out of time, Of, or should I say run out of batsman it is worthwhile just hanging in there for a while because he needs to use every single ball there is available and what's more the West Indies today have provided a few extra ones seven wides have been bowled and three no balls and so they have to bowl an extra ten balls to the Pakistanis one's in the air, one bounce to Clive Lloyd an extra ten balls which We'll probably get up to 12 before the day is out, which means they'll have to bowl an extra two overs. This is the last ball of Vivian Richards over. The ball hit high down the ground, and that's probably going to be six. Just over the boundary. Yes, well, Roger doesn't mind taking the challenge. There's a man placed on that rope, and he cleared it by yard. Arthur for Marshall couldn't turn it into a catch. And so six there, a beautiful 6-2 to Roger. Five for 112.
Wilson Raja facing the last ball of Richard's uh, spell, the 10th over, took up the challenge and cleared the man at long off. It took Richard's figures to 41 runs for no wicket off 10 overs. That was a good challenge by the little left-hander. Put a lot of pressure on Malcolm Marshall, who couldn't catch it within the rope. Now it's 5 for 112. That was good intelligent batting by the all-rounder. It's a beautiful shot, and had it not gone over the rope, of course it would have been out. But those are the sort of gambles that have to be taken in one-day cricket. The field very well placed out there by Clive Lloyd. He's got the Pakistanis in a little bit of trouble. I don't think he intends letting go. Mid-off there and extra cover. Backward point, so those three men saving one. The third man down on the boundary. And just out of the picture to the left. Apart from that slip, there's a man covering fours. So those are the single saving fieldsmen. And Joel Garner right down there on the boundary, cutting off the fours. Khan, six fieldsmen on the offside and three on the leg. Going for a single, this could be close, and his overthrows. In fact, this might be a five, the ball racing away down a square leg. It is. Michael Holding doesn't like it too much at all. Young Logie did his best to affect the run out there, but missed the stumps, and the backing up wasn't very good by Vivian Richards. That's just what you do when you put the fieldsmen under pressure. They took off quickly. Imran was always going to be home, I felt. Had it covered and Richards couldn't cut off the throw. And that's handy because that just gives the run rate a bit of a boost. And the score races to 5 for 116. 17, in fact. So that's uh, turning it up in the comfortable stage if these two can survive. They're scoring well 30, 30 runs of 57 deliveries from Wasn Raja. Holding uh, wasn't at all happy about that. Uh, who can blame him? Another single down to third man. Holding is bold. <laughs> Five for 118 and Andy Roberts being brought back into the attack. He's bowled six overs. No wicket for 17 has four to go. And so now that Vivian Richards has completed his 10. Robert's been brought on at that end, no doubt to complete his spell. He has four to go. Marshall has bowled seven, so he's got three to go. And Joel Garner has bowled eight overs and conceded only 12 runs and taken two wickets. He's got another two to go, so Clive Lloyd got uh, the bowling changes sorted out. His fielder now in position, and Roberts to bowl to Raja. That hit away nicely on the offside, but once again, Joel Garner, the sweeper down there, Cutting off the four. Pretty important that fieldsman on this ground. The rope makes a big difference, and we do beat the inside uh, circle of fieldsmen. It's almost certainly going to be four, unless you've got someone down there. Yes, and Clive Boyd cutting that off on both sides of the wicket. There's a man square at point and also at square leg. Much the same in Adelaide, Tony. If you protect those square shots, you're cutting off four all the time. Lloyd, with a lot of experience in limited over cricket, probably the most successful of all the captains in this type of cricket in the world. Had a wonderful run with this West Indian team. And he's not giving away anything here today. He's pretty lucky. He's got uh, the sort of side that uh, blends very well with the one-day game. Of very effective fast bowlers and the spinners he uses when he uses them are good batsmen as well so not much of a tail and, uh, even in his tail he's quick bowlers Andy Roberts is an example he's a good player with the bat pretty sensible thinker Andy Roberts it is said that uh, his contribution in terms of his thought over the years has been quite a large one
And of course, uh, the West Indians benefit too from the fact that a lot of their players play a lot of cricket in England where they play a tremendous amount of one-day cricket, more than anywhere else in the world. They did start playing one-day cricket there before any other country as well. Clive Lloyd, captain in Lancashire, has uh, a lot of exposure to the one-day game. And this man, Joel Garner, too, with Somerset, plays almost two one-day games a week in the English summer. Yes, it shows in their bowling and their field placements, and particularly in the fact that they don't give the batsmen too much room to square the wicket when they're bowling. They make them hit straight to the field. Roberts, in particular, tries to keep the ball up. It's in the air and well taken. Beautifully caught there by Logie. That was very low, and Roger wasn't too sure that... Uh, the ball had in fact carried, but Logie doesn't make mistakes with those low catches at cover. Diving to his left and picking up another one. He made the most difficult catches with easy. He was going to ground and he dived forward. Caught it as clean as a whistle. Super catch, that. It certainly was. In fact, went to his right there and took it beautifully. So the end of Raja and the score now six for 122. Ejaz comes to the wicket at 7 for 122. Wasn't Raja, didn't quite time that, but it was a superb catch. Justine Logie diving forward and both hands. Just a little bit wide from Roberts and he opened himself out to thrash it square and he dived forward and across and took a superb catch though. No fear at all. Six for 126. Andy Roberts to continue. Javed Miandad won the toss this morning and elected to bat first. The Pakistanis uh, didn't get off to a bad start. They put on 26 for the first wicket. But uh, then they lost Mansour. It was run out. 13. They lost their next wicket at 32 and then the big blow. Zahir Abbas roll, run out as well for one and he's a very important player to the side Zahir. They really could have done without that run out. Yandad was involved in it and so from being one for 26 they went to three for 32 and it's uh, obviously been tough going for them since then. Imran and Raj have slightly fixed that and now Ejaz doing his best to provide the sort of support that Imran needs. Ejaz has two, Imran 26. Yes, Ejaz um, will try and give as much strike as possible to Imran. Ejaz is a handy little cricketer, bowls off spin, good field. But Imran's a key for Pakistan if they're going to make a reasonable score. The six for one, two, seven. This is... Uh, the time where he must control the situation. He's got a lot of experience. He's found touch. He's batting pretty well. Must go on. It's the 40th over. Well played. Straight down the ground. That'll be four. Well, that was a whitish ball, and Imran, clearly aware that the square field was covered, that he's best to play it straight. He did, and he got four for it.
Good cricket. Good intelligent cricket. He's summed up the situation. The fields were up. Off and on sides on the drive and he gave it plenty of bat. He was always after it. Struck it right in the middle of that blade and it flew down to long off for four. Roberts also for short run. Six for 144. Joel Garner taking over again from Michael Holding. Garner, tremendous performance by him today. Two for 12. Eight overs, one maiden in that. Just wanting the field moved a little. Two men behind square leg now. Larry Gomes, the wider of the two. Very square. The offside, three men. The man very fine down at third man. He's fine for the one that gets through the snick. There's no slips there, and he's there to cover that one. He's gone. That's an extraordinary stroke, in fact, to play against Garner. First ball of his new spell. Each has the batsman out. Just developing into a nice little partnership of 22, but Ejaz just losing concentration. A change in bowling lineup bringing instant success for the West Indies. So Joel Garner now three for 12, and Pakistan seven for 144. Tahir Nakash comes in to join Imran Khan. Imran's on 38. And uh, Joel Garner picked up his third wicket there. Rash shot from Batsman looking for the big hit. Not much to come now for Pakistan. Me Jazz should have certainly been just pushing away and trying to give the single to Imran up the other end. But now we're in, right in amongst the tail. Tahir on strike. Seven for 151, and the stump's been hit on five occasions today. Three out bowled, two run outs, only two batsmen out to catchers. Joel Garner snaring three of those batsmen out. Oh, just off the top of the fingers. Would have been a great catch by little Logie out there. Difficult to keep out of the game at the moment. Got off, off the ground. Tahir, good shot, hit it right in the middle. Just flicking off the top of the fingers. Stopped it going for a boundary, that's for certain. And Clive Lloyd just bringing in big Joel Garner now. The crowd appreciating that. The small changing over to the big. Logie now patrolling the outfield. Field hitting, it'll be four runs, just crosses the rope. So Tahir just starting to open out. Two followed by this four, good work that you'd see in the coaching manual, but very effective. My 
Boy just moving his field about now. Have outfield shots and suddenly the single start to appear out there. Four men in the restricted area, two on the offside, two on the on. Same spot, very well hit. It's an unusual field on the offside. Those two men on that offside are just within about uh, 15, 20 yards of one another. And uh, it went well over their heads. You don't often see handed out to Michael Holding. Ten runs from three balls. It's just what the Pakistan batting needed. That was coming a little late, 761. 15 runs from only 13 balls, so his strike rate be over 100% at the moment in this innings. And that is out. But no, it's not. He's lost it in the sun. Well, Clive Lloyd's wearing uh, a white sun hat, but uh, he looked up, lost it, looking straight into the sun. And it looked a routine. Perfectly called by Richie Benno, and then suddenly the ball just getting in the sun. There's a bit of elevation to it. Clive Lloyd turned his back on it, so Tahir lived, picked up a single. And just starting to move down in the west. Tahir looking for the big one again, went in the air, looked as though he had it covered, in the last moment just losing it. Eighth over now, 164, 41 to Imran Khan. Andy Roberts taking over, and again from Big Joel Garner. There's ten overs. Conceded three for 17. So he runs straight away off the bowling of Andy Roberts. If Richards was in very quickly, just limited to the quick single. Fielding of the West Indies been very exciting here today. Charged in, saved a lot of runs. Looking for two here. And that's good running. Imran Khan, who in the previous five overs, only scored five singles. Got two, and he's got that scoreboard moving over again. 43 runs, 67 balls face Remy. That's really well hit. Viv Richards coming around for it. Two more to Imran Khan, goes to 45. And the Pakistan batsmen now really opening up, and they've got to. There's only three overs remaining. A well fielded by Greenwich. No sign of that injured knee then from Gordon Greenwich. It was hit with tremendous power. Got a cross. No sign of the limp then. Solidly held that beautiful boundary. 
Just about Imran's favourite stroke. Seven for one, seven three. Pakistan innings accelerating nicely. 7th, 173. Two overs remaining. So we've got three wickets up their sleeve, so they should be really throwing the bat for these final two overs. Holding, none for 31. It's the single out to Deep Madon. Imran Khan is 49. 7th for 174 now. This over and one more still to go. And a great delivery from Michael Holding, the shorter one. He knew that Cameron Khan was looking for the drive. Put a little extra into that one. Cut away just a little off the wicket. Imran Khan still on 49. There it is. The Richard is fielding. And 50 to Imran Khan. Fine innings that just when Pakistan needed someone to hold things together. Appreciation from Tahir. Imran's 50 runs with only 73 balls in 81 minutes. Couldn't have come at a better time for Pakistan. The hard hitting of Imran Khan. Well, it was 5 for 75, now 7 for 179 as we come up to the final over. Andy Roberts to bowl it. The hard hitting Imran Khan on strike. Straight. Could be a couple in this. Taking him on. There is two. Fielding of the West Indies. Fallen away a little under pressure in the last couple of overs. Hard hitting of Tahir and. Imran Khan, Desmond Haynes, has had a lot to do today, to charge in from wide mid-off. It's in the air, but it's safe. What sort of a field uh, has Robert Scott out there? He has a man at straight hit, one at uh, long off. Two men down, another man out the cover. So he's uh, really got an offside field. Only four men on on the leg. And another boundary. Sensible hitting from Imran Khan. Only four men on the onside. He's prepared to risk the opportunity of getting it across there, and he's doing it very effectively at the moment. Such a bad ball from Andy Roberts. It's got over the head of Logie in close. It was four runs. Uh, Andy Roberts now just changing his tactics, just going around the wicket. Which means the line will be taking it away from outside the off stump. Let's see if Imran Khan can get it across there this time. And that's more like Richards. Nine runs so far. It's over. Just a single then with Richards. They were prepared to take him on. Sensibly thrown. Thrown it on the bounce. Uh, here even getting into the act. 
chipping it down through deep mid off. A useful partnership this. 144 when Tahi came in, so 189 now, partnership of 45. So last ball. There he goes, just straight down the ground. Two there. And every run vital to Pakistan. The end of the innings now, full 50 overs. Seven for 191. Well, this game right alive now. Sixty-two not out from Imran Khan. A fine innings from him, and a good tail enders innings from Tahir. Just a raise of the bat. This crowd really appreciating that innings. Well calculated. Because he is going to run out of partners at one stage, but Tahir giving him good support at the end. Look at the big hitter. There's a piece of bat flies out here. You see it going out of the screen then. A little chip out of it, not as reminiscent as the one that Rodney Marsh broke last year. Runs coming off practically every delivery in that last over, as they did in the previous one too. So two runs. Let's have another look at that chip come off the bat. You can see it just flick off there. Ended up out at mid-wicket. In Pakistan. After winning the toss and deciding to bat, this ended up 791, and we'll be back at the SCG in a few moments with Richie Bennett. Zim Raja starting a new over, rolling his leg spinners and fittingly over now to Richie Benno and Bill Laurie. Beautifully placed and a perfect piece of timing as well. Half century stand comes up. That was a delightful straight. Richard's in fine touch this evening. Just waited for the top spinner to come onto the bat and right over the top of it and put it away. Beautifully timed. Oh, Made 191. Fine partnership between Imran Khan and the man bowling at the moment, Tahir. 47. That took them from 144 to 191. But there's some good cricket in that. I hear about it strongly, and Imran played some lovely shots. <laughs> Four signal by the umpire there, and that is fatal, bowling short. Yes, and worst of all, no ball. So there's no value there at all. And bounces just inside the ropes. The line was OK, Richard's got a top edge, but he could afford to be carefree. It was a bonus ball for him. And uh, here must keep the ball up, just short of a length and off stump. Almost batting in an arrogant fashion. Having a meeting down in Melbourne today, I understand, Bill, to talk about uh, the Melbourne pitch, it's the Melbourne Cricket Club. Magnificent stuff. Absolutely magnificent. Not great bowling. The ball short like that, but a beautiful shot. Yes, this is a difference of two bounce, which it's just gave it what it deserved and whacked it forward a square leg. He could never play that shot with any confidence on the Melbourne wicket. Yes, I read they're having a meeting with you, but they've been having a lot of meetings lately. I just hope that finally something happens for the sake of cricket on that. Board. He's trying very hard. 
trying not to bowl too short. Right on the middle and off stump. Enjoying the spell of topspin bowling with the odd run and the one that comes out the back of the hand. Uh, That's it. Gone. The wrong one, he went to court and no ball's been called. Well, how about that? It wasn't much. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. How sad for him. That shot was on. It was a beautiful delivery. Greenwich is going. Good over from Wazim Raja. Bad luck as far as he is concerned. We can have another look at that from uh, the opposite end. And there goes the arm as the ball was about halfway down the pitch. It could be run out. So he hustled back. Vivian Richards knew he wasn't in the slightest concerned at the other end. And uh, umpire Johnson had called it as it was halfway down. Greenwich didn't hear it. Well, I can't ever remember a batsman getting it off a no ball or bowling a no ball like that. Since I've been watching cricket, that was uh, I didn't see the call. Or he, and I thought he was out, and I think so did Gordon Greenwich. It's bad luck for Pakistan. Just the single there to bring up the hundred for West Indies. Good effort from this pair, Greenwich and Richards. Beautiful stroke play. One for 100. Haynes out for two. Greenwich 53, Richards 38. Jarvid still keen at mid-wicket. Um, he's really kept his team on their toes. They've fielded fairly well. Now we're starting to feel the pressure, knowing that they've got a real chance of making the finals. Young, young team under a young skipper. crowd uh, enjoying this display by Greenwich and Richards. They've got a nice warm night and they've seen some magnificent stroke play. Greenwich hit two sixes square of the wicket and Vivian Richards has played that square drive to perfection. I should imagine Thursday night will be a bumper here. Australians in action. Wonderful spectacle. Richards really playing with a lot of confidence. Seems to have all the time in the world when he's in touch. Yeah, so it's, it runs away and it's a bit casual and he's made to hurry, but he was always going to make it. Just the one run off the bat. It was also called no ball. When he dropped the back foot. Pakistan bowlers giving away bonus deliveries. Wasn't Rajas played the supreme penalty. It's bowled Greenwich off a no ball, bowling leg spin.
Richards has gone. Bowled by Tahir, attempting something really extravagant there. Looking for the ball outside off stump, and Pakistan have struck. Now, is this the fight back from the Pakistan bowlers and fielders? Well, I don't know, Richie, but that was a bonus wicket. Guy on 41, probably the best batsman in the world, threw it away, and it's unbelievable. It's two for 107. Avoid. West Indian skipper coming to the crease. He'll be a bit annoyed about that shot, I would think. It's when they're coasting towards what appeared to be a comfortable victory. You lose one or two wickets and anything can happen. And that was an upcountry swipe from the great player. He departs for 41. Difficult to explain that shot at this stage of the match. Yeah, it'll be in. After 26 overs, West Indies are uh, quite a way ahead on the comparative rate with Pakistan, but lost two wickets now. Interesting to see how Wazim Raja goes against the new batsman, Clive Lloyd. All top spin. Avoid 37 years of age and super average 50. He's a great hitter of the ball on the front foot. Wasim Raja has uh, two men out on the on the boundary for Clive Lloyd, who's played seven matches, made 251 runs. Two men out, one at deep mid-wicket, and the other one around there at deep backward square where Wazim Raja had Clive Lloyd caught in Adelaide. That's the man who'll do the fielding there now. It's been a top spell from Wazim Raja. He hasn't been punished. He's got a good line and length, and he's got them pushing forward for the bat pad. He's, he enjoys his cricket. He's a very... Useful lower order batsman. Handy all round in any type of cricket. Joys is bowling, spinning the ball there on those fingers. It's given that a real belt straight down the ground into the side screen. Beautifully timed stroke, and it could hardly have gone straighter. No, it wasn't a bad ball. It's just the fact that he's had them a little bit tied down, and sign of a great player. He used his feet to that one, the half volley, and hit it straight. Never any risk with that shot. Followed through. Roger to continue to Greenwich. Man at deep backward square, but that's a great shot. Yes, so it's not easy to sweep a top spinner and Gordon Greenwich had that 20 got down and really gave it some bat. But uh, here, not able to cut it off and it crashed into the fence. Rolled the wrists and hit it much like Peter Burge. 
backward sweep of the forward or backward of square, that time opting for the... 29 West Indies, here's Tony Gregg and with him in the commentary box Ian Chappell. Thank you Richie, Gordon Greenwich has 70, Clive Lloyd on 6, Lloyd has the strike. Gordon Greenwich, down at the non-striker's end, doing a fine job for the West Indies. He was out uh, bowled by Roger off a no ball. And, uh, he started to walk off the ground, in fact, and then uh, realised the umpire had his arm up and was very happy to come back. It didn't please Roger too much. And he's still out there on 70. Oh, here's the bowler. One for 23, his figures. A well-run single there by Clive Lloyd and the ball deflecting there off the stumps and as a result they get themselves one overthrow. He jazz the fielder there, getting away a good throw. Unfortunately for him, the rebound off the stumps caught the man backing up who was Mosin Khan, caught him uh, in the wrong direction. They picked up an extra single. Very difficult that when you're backing up in the right area and it deflects off the stumps. Right off the middle of the bat there, and fielded by Sakonda's knee. Sakonda's at mid on. And that one was hit quite firmly straight onto his knee, and he's not uh, got too much flesh on him, Sakonda. He's liable to puncture the uh, cricket ball, Sakonda, if it's hit him on the knee. Well, he's worn it pretty well. Tie here again. Oh, that beats the outside edge. A little shy at the stumps there from the weir keeper, but Lloyd was behind the crease. Very good delivery there from Tahir, moving away off the seam and genuinely beats the outside edge of the bat there. Very good delivery. Wazim uh, with a little underarm throw, hitting the stumps as uh, Tahir can't believe his bad luck. Well, that's a beautiful shot. It went over pitch, roundabout off stump, and Clive Lloyd smashes that down the ground, and he didn't even bother to run, nor need he have four from the minute it hit the bat. I'll take that. You beat, beat the outside edge of my bat and see what happens. Absolutely smashes that down the ground. And just stands there with a look of contempt on his face. Sign of a... Very good player, beaten by Wonder. So he jazz again to bowl his off spinners. Going to have a little chat with uh, Javid Meander. I don't think he's all that uh, satisfied with his field. Seems that uh, he wants someone back at deep mid wicket. Well, it looks like Budas has come out onto the ground. He's down at deep mid wicket. No, no, it's not. Rizwan and there he's come out and is feeling a deep mid wicket and Jazz has also pushed his bid on back and that one played down the ground to mid off so another single to Gordon Greenwich he moves on to 73 Pakistan have quite a bit of strength to come back into this team. They're missing uh, Safraz and Madassa, two very important players for tonight's game. But they also have Majid Khan to come back at some stage or other. He'll be a very handy addition to the middle order, and he bowls a bit of off spin. They have said that they'd like to save him up for the finals, Majid, because he's uh, got a pinched nerve in the back but I think if uh, things get a little tight in getting to the finals 
we might see Majid Khan in this side. Going right down the wicket and goes for the big one there, but succeed in middling it. Got a little bottom edge and it's gone racing way down to square leg. So just one. It looked as if he was trying to hit that one over the side screen. I think uh, if he had have got hold of it, might have not only put it over the side screen, but uh, well up into the noble stand as well. Plenty of effort, not much result. Once again, sliding across the surface, there's the gander. <laughs> a big smile on his face. One more to Gordon Greenwich. Very energetic cricketer, Sikanda, always trying. Makes a great diving save there. And there it is, after 33 overs. West Indies two for one four five. Pakistan was five for one nine nine. And it looks as if Java is going to bring Sakanda back into the attack. The reason for that is because Tahir has completed his ten overs, one for thirty-one his figures. And Sakanda, who opened the bowling with Imran, has bowled six overs and taken no wicket for thirty-one. Javid now really has to try and bowl the West Indies out from here. Well, Sikanda has been brought back into the attack. No. Gordon Greenwich and Clive Lloyd out there. They'd have a pretty good chance of getting themselves selected in that uh, Sitchrome Super Test team. That side is going to be selected from all the test players in view in Australia this summer. It's in the air and over the infield, bouncing down towards the rope at deep mid wicket. Four more to Gordon Greenwich. Just getting back to the sitcom. Super Test team. Twelve players from Australia, Pakistan and the West Indies to make the mightiest team possible. Of course, uh, to play a Test match, that is. And, uh, I suppose the two out there at the moment must have a good chance of getting themselves selected. Again, Greenwich forces, and once again, he finds the gap, and that'll be 4-2. Well, that's the 150, well played by Gordon Greenwich. Two fours in two balls. And still just a little bit of a limp. A limp. So entry forms for that. And so there it is, the West Indies 2 for 155, and... Dismissal so far, the men out so far. Desmond Haynes was the first to go. He was bowled by Imran Khan. For two, this is how it happened. The ball nipping back a little bit, catching the inside edge of the bat there and being dragged back onto the stumps. That wicket fell with a score on 31. Uh, didn't really get up too much. That one's sneaking through under the defence of Desmond Haynes. And this was Vivian Richards backing away there, trying to hit tie here down into the Sydney Harbour and uh, he missed the tie here very happy he was out for 41 and that wicket fell at 107 you haven't seen a wicket fall since then two for 155 and chasing 192 and a change in the bowling another change in the bowling for Pakistan as they make a belated attempt to try and bowl the West Indies out. Imran Khan back into the attack with four overs left to go. He'll be bowling to Gordon Greenwich. And a big appeal there for LBW. has gone. Imran strikes with the first ball of his new spell. Traps Gordon Greenwich. LBW. Well, Imran... Uh, Immediately with his extra pace, forcing Gordon Greenwich onto the back foot. 
catches him right in front as that one just comes back at him from the off stump and umpire Mel Johnson judges him LBW Gordon Greenwich uh, grabs his hat and he's on his way the West Indies are now 3 for 155 New batsman Larry Gomes he has not yet uh, qualified for his strike rate by having 150 balls faced in this limited over competition but he certainly has faced uh, many more than that in test cricket Larry Gomes has been in very good form in test matches That's how Gordon Greenwich disappeared from the scene. LBW to Imran. Well, there's a big appeal for that one too, and that couldn't have been far away. It might well have hit the stumps, but probably pitched just outside leg stump. Yes, I would say just pitching outside leg stump as Larry Gomes attempted to turn that one away on the leg side. But, uh, very nearly... Two wickets in two balls there for Imran Khan. He already has two. That would have given him his third. Imran having a good match. He was undefeated on 62 and there he is now. With two wickets. the tyre power strike rate bowling Dasa's top of it holding Marshall and Imran sneaking in there he's fourth at the moment getting a wicket every 36.27 balls so uh, we're having a pretty good season pick the batting and bowling winners and nominate their strike rate. Eddie forms at all tyre power agencies. And so there's another competition for you. Tyre power strike rate competition. And uh, what's more, uh, you get a trip to New Zealand if you win that one as well. So if you keep entering for things like the tyre power strike rate and the two super tests, you could end up spending a lot of time in New Zealand. So it's he jazz to continue bowling his off spinners and your commentators now, Tony Cozier and Keith Stackpole. Single to start off with, down to mid-on. And once again, Port Tarrier, who's having great difficulty in picking up that ball tonight. Again, in trouble out there. It's almost like a bar of soap for him. Nothing, nothing to do with the ground. Maybe just a little bit of uh, dampness on the ball, but... He's really had difficulty in controlling it.
Beautiful shot off the back foot by Clive Lloyd. Runs coming very easily now for the West Indies, as they have for the greater part of their innings. So they know how to pace themselves. Be able to judge exactly what they need per over. Really don't have much to do now, just keep on getting the runs in their singles. The West Indies have played a lot of limited over cricket and uh, Clive Lloyd knows if they bat the full 50 overs, chasing a score of 191, they should get victory. There's the man out there for the Clive Lloyd shot. He's very strong in that area. And just a single for him. Clive Lloyd advancing down the wicket. With tremendous power. In tremendous touch this year, Clive Lloyd. West Indies, 22 runs away from victory. Certainly running into some hot form now. A slow to start off with, at the beginning of this World Series Cup match. Lost two out of their first three games. But coming good at the right time of the season. Harry Gomes placement once more, getting it past the point and the single to him. So it's three for 171. The comparison after 40 overs, West Indies three for 176. Pakistan six for 132. Ended up 191 all out. a beautiful delivery and it's given a wide given a wide by the umpire and Imran can't believe it delivering such a brute of a delivery and umpire Mel Johnson has been very consistent with his call of wides today with other deliveries early on in Pakistan innings very similar to that one and he called a wide for those so going to do the same exactly again it was a brute of a ball, as Tony Cozier described it. Clive Lloyd just eluding it, just getting out the road. Fortunate for him, that the ball didn't, the helmet didn't go back down onto the wicket. Lloyd has clobbered that over point and it's gone for four. Imran just not happy at all and I think he has good reason. Umpire Johnson has been strict today in the wide calls and he has been consistent. But Imran really put in a very good bouncer and having seen the ball rock the batsman back, helmet dropping off, always a magnificent sight for a fast bowler to have a batsman in trouble and then to turn around to see the umpire signal wide. And uh, I think the ex exasperation as far as uh, Imran was concerned, was expressed in the following delivery, and Lloyd dispatched it over point for four. Yes, his concentration certainly was affected, and now he's not giving up. He's going around the wicket to the left-hander. Meaning he's trying to come in outside that off stump. Lloyd has got it through, but it won't go all the way. Should be cut off. Wazim Raja. And Lloyd gets three. So the West Indies going very quickly now towards their target. This will be their fifth victory in the competition. Their seventh match. And in fact, after three matches, they'd lost two. So they're now heading towards their fourth consecutive victory. And it will virtually ensure their presence in the grand finals. But they'll still want to make doubly certain in the matches to come with at least one more victory.
Imran Khan, the only fast bowler of any real note in the Pakistan side. He's taken the game right up to the West Indies batsman. Two for 42, so he's maintained his strike rate. Could he end up with a wicket every five overs in this innings. West Indies edging towards that win, which will bring them another two points in this competition. Eight runs needed to win. Gomes, he's already into double figures. He's on 11. So that Imran is the only pa Pakistan fast bowler of any note. That's true. But he does the work of at least two. Has done all season. Tremendous athlete. Scored 62 not out today. Must be very close in line for the Man of the Match award here tonight. Again, a difficult uh, decision for the judges who will determine that award. Well, we've seen several batsmen play on today, and that was almost another one. Well, clearly tra troubling Larry Gomes with that short one. Look how far it came in and just practically bounced over the top of that off stump. Pitches outside off stump, but look at the angle that that comes in. Hits, and just bounces over the top of that off stump. And Imran Khan could consider himself a little unlucky with that delivery. That's the reason he's gone around the wicket, to make sure that, or to try and get one to cut in. Get an inside edge. He did it, but it didn't go back onto the wicket. And that's Imran's last ball. His 10 overs have gone. The West Indies will be happy to see the back of him. Three for 184. West Indies, eight runs for victory. This makes the game on Thursday afternoon and evening a pretty important one between Australia and Pakistan. Australia needing every possible victory. Three games remaining for them. Well, the West Indies once, or twice, Pakistan once. Javits certainly putting everything into it still. Just the seven runs needed now. First night match the Pakistanis have played. A number of them never had any experience under the lights in match conditions before. As I say, a handicap by the absence of two top players. So one can feel a bit of sympathy for them. And there's a collision between the two outfielders. And the batsmen are going to take three. You go your way, I'll go mine. And as it so happened, they crashed into each other. Great placement by Larry Gomes, hitting it straight, and both fieldsmen coming across. Mosin going down first, and then Salim. Almost looked like the Grand National there. times we've seen the ball hit the stumps today and the batsman benefit by going for an overthrow. Amazing, Tony, how many times we've hit those, seen those stumps hit today, whether the run-out's been on or whether it hasn't. Incredible number of times. There must be a magnet in those stumps for the ball. So that's all they need now to register their fifth victory in this competition. And they need two. And a good performance by the West Indies, although Pakistan managed to get 
more runs than they seemed at one time likely to get. They were 75 for five at one stage and reached 191 for seven in the end. The West Indies have done it pretty comfortably. Last ball of this over now. And they'll just get the one to level up the scores. Imran with uh, flowers in his back pocket presented to him by a lady from the crowd this evening. She ran onto the ground presented him with the flowers and a kiss. The West Indies equal, 191, and as Tony Cozier mentioned, played this game to perfection. Still plenty of overs up their sleeve, plenty of wickets. It's been no real trouble for them. And the real problem, I suppose, was when Desmond Haynes was dismissed early on for two. And that's it for the West Indies. Their fifth victory in this competition. Lloyd turns Wazim Raja for a single. Runs off the field knowing that his team is virtually certain now to go through to the Benson and Hedges World Series Cup Finals. They've got a tremendous run rate well ahead of the other teams. They've got their five victories. They need one more to be absolutely certain. But at this time, this virtually means that they're through. So the West Indies, three for 192. Imran with his flower. The West Indies with their victory. Captains there just shaking hands. And now Pakistan and Australia are the ones who have to front up here on Thursday in a crucial game for both teams, more especially Australia, who have just the four points from seven games, three matches remaining, two against the West Indies. Pakistan with just the two matches to go, one against Australia, one against the West Indies in Brisbane on Saturday. And the West Indies sitting pretty there on top of the table. Ten points from seven matches. There are three remaining matches. Two in Brisbane over the weekend. The first against Pakistan, the second against Australia. And then they come back here to the SCG next Tuesday for the final match in the preliminary rounds against Australia. So the West Indies then winning quite comfortably by seven wickets.